yet another day of insurgency in Baghdad. A suicide car bomber has become a martyr to his cause on the road to the airport. Killing two Iraqis and injuring others who happened to be in the wrong place at the wrong time. His intended victims were the American soldiers in this Humvee, now almost unrecognizable as it blazes next to the crater left in the roadway. Not too close, mate. There's exploding ammo in there. This time, the soldiers survived with severe injuries, which spelled the end of the war for them. Nearby, a woman, blinded by the blast, pleads for news of her mother. A young girl, possibly her daughter, is dead. As we film, snipers open fire on those who've gathered to help. One Iraqi guardsman is wounded, another is killed. There were five car bombings in and around Baghdad on this day. On most days, there are suicide bombings, shootings and attacks using remote-controlled bombs. The insurgency has been growing steadily since President George Bush declared the invasion phase of his occupation of Iraq was over. <laughs> This is the epicenter of the resistance. Sada city has become a breeding ground of the armed Shiite opposition. It's a vast slum in the northern suburbs of Baghdad, a place where Americans will not go without support of armored columns and helicopter gunships. These young men, ritually flagellating themselves with chains, are from Sada City. They've come to town to join tens of thousands of others, marking the death of Musa, the seventh holy imam of their Shia faith, who was poisoned by his enemies in 799. They're also applauding a relatively new spiritual leader, a young firebrand cleric who's become a potent enemy of occupying American forces. Moqtada al sadr is the grandson of a former prime minister of Iraq. His father was a venerated religious leader murdered by Saddam Hussein. Now Moqtada has also become a hero of the Shiite resistance. He's an influential figure as well in the eyes of more senior clerics like Sheikh Abdul Jabba Manhel. This family represents freedom in the eye of Shia. This is one of the reasons why they obey Muqtada, why they, uh, they rush into death and they sacrifice themselves because of Muqtada. Back in Sada city, the warriors of Muqtada's so-called Mehdi army are the real enforcers on the streets. Their authority springs from the barrel of a gun. The Mehdi army directs traffic and does a lot of the work in Sada city. Our Iraqi cameramen arrive for what appeared to be some road work. In fact, the Mehdi army followers were digging holes to plant bombs to attack American military vehicles. I've come to meet two members of the Mehdi army in a safe house in Baghdad. An interview in Sada city would not be safe for me or for them. They call themselves Muhammad and Wasim. They're barely in their 20s, but they're already veterans of the battles for the holy cities of Najaf and Kufa. What do you think of Muqtada al Sadr? Said Muqtada Sadr, قائد يعني بالنسبة لنا قائد رجل شجاع وإحنا إن شاء الله يكون جنود أو فيائله. 
واحنا شلون تقول مطوعته يعني شو يقول احنا ننفذ سيد مقتدى Mohammed and Wasim are neighbors and sworn enemies of America and the West because of what's happened in Iraq. Would you prefer the situation with Saddam Hussein still in charge? No. Saddam Hussein يعني كلش اذونا ومدينه الصدر كلش يعني تاذت من مدينه الامريكان Sada city has become a war zone with US forces and their Iraqi National Guard allies fighting pitched battles against the Shiites They were persecuted by Saddam Hussein but now see their so-called liberators as oppressors who failed to make life better. وشو شفت الشوارع انتم تكلمون زباله بيها وهاي ماي ماكو ما يجيها مجاري طاقه يعني كلها قاعده بس يعني بس جيش المهدي قاعد ينظفون بيها. Why not join the Iraqi army? Why not join the National Guard? تبار دول خونه يعني. Muhammad and Wasim are local heroes who take on a menacing appearance as they prepare to take part in another insurgency attack. They've joined other young men from their block to form a neighborhood unit of the Mehdi army. They're all angry and disaffected and no strangers to the AK-47 and the rocket-propelled grenade. This is a community army. Some in the unit have odd jobs but no steady work. Comrade in arms Muhammad Abdullah tries to keep himself busy fixing doors and windows. Another fighter, Muhammad Abbas, is trying to set up a business installing satellite TV. The dishes were banned under Saddam, now they've sprouted on every rooftop. It provides Muhammad and Wasim with information they could never access under the old regime. But they don't like what they see in their window to the world. For them, there are very few choices. What will make things better? من مدينة الصدر ومن العراق إن شاء الله. Crime is rife in the suburbs of Baghdad, but instead of policing the streets, these Iraqi officers have an unpopular and thankless task. They've been assigned to protect electricity workers who move in to disconnect tens of thousands who've illegally tapped into the electricity mains. Residents will be left without lights, cooking, and the means to cool their homes in the 45 degree heat. It's no way to win hearts and minds. But the occupation forces have been trying to build bridges with the mainstream clerics, encouraging them to draw followers from more radical clerics. The age of Saddam. Saddam Hussein wanted this to be the world's biggest Sunni mosque, but the US-led invasion interrupted its construction when it was just 70% complete. It's now been handed over to the Shiites. The new imam is Sheikh Abdul Jabba Manhel. How many workers do you think it would take to finish the mosque? Thousands of, of, of workers, I think. And the engineers of this mosque, or build this mosque, visit us from time to time, and they, they say to us, we are ready to complete this mosque. When America came, they think that uh, the America have a magic stick. Well, uh, the America will solve the problem overnight. But uh, they discover they, uh, they are cheated. And America didn't solve the problems on the contrary. Sheikh Manhel wants government money to complete his mosque and provide tens of thousands of jobs in the process. 
It's not as if there's a shortage of labour, though. Each day, thousands of men queue in public squares and parks, hoping to be picked up for work. For the lucky few, a price is agreed guaranteeing food on the table for a few days at least. Many of the workers who can't get a government job are some of the estimated 400,000 members of Saddam's disbanded armed forces. Humam Shamar is an economist from Baghdad University. He claims one of the biggest mistakes was breaking up the Iraqi military. If we can reconstitute this army and if, you can, if we can assure uh, a, a good level of standard for the people who <coughs> is now uh, without any uh, kind of work, we can uh, break down this vicious circle. This is an army of a different kind, a familiar sight in the cities of Iraq. The men in orange overalls are among 87,000 workers enlisted to collect the garbage. Their job is to make the cities more livable. It's supposed to keep the unemployed away from the insurgency groups. The Make Work scheme is administered by Humam Shafiq Misconi. There are tens or even hundreds of thousands unemployed. They are angry people, they are hungry people. They want to provide for their families and they are willing to do anything, even uh, to participate in these insurgency activities, uh, just to provide for their families. It's Humam Misconi's job to hand out 125 million US dollars to 350 municipalities. But the money and the jobs run out in November. So an unemployed person uh, can be a very angry person. Yeah, and he's a potential terrorist, for example. Wasim and Muhammad don't see themselves as terrorists, but as freedom fighters. Holy warriors fighting the United States and their puppet forces. They're battling for a better standard of living, even though they have no idea how it can be won. What do you want for the future? What you are doing is, is very dangerous. Don't you ever worry about dying? Iraq is a largely middle-class society with middle-class aspirations. But the promised prosperity which was supposed to follow the toppling of the former dictator has not materialized. The lack of security in this ravaged nation is the biggest impediment to Iraq's recovery. There can be no peace here, whilst unemployment and squalor provide fertile ground for the insurgency groups.